Welcome back to Transformers Cyberverse, or Transformers Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures as it's also known as. Today we'll be taking a look at Season 3, Episode 9, The Trial. In this episode, the Transformers are looking for a way to wake up the war titan Iaconis. I, lo I love this little moment here with Whirl. Where's Perceptor? He's coming! Oh! I'll get him! He's so cute, I love him. Again, between him and RescueBots Academy Whirl, I think I'm turning into a big Whirl fan. After finally finding Iaconis' head, they come to the conclusion that they need Windblade in order to wake him up. Hot Rod and Clobber hack into the loop. Windblade, you're about to see something crazy. I know, the Chromium float is totally crazy. So Chromia is a big fan of Chromium? Is that why she's called Chromia? Outside the loop, Perceptor does something to Windblade's control helmet that temporarily lets her see outside the loop. But they are soon attacked by the Quintessons. I like how we get this Avengers-esque pan around our heroes as they're all back to back, symbolizing their unity and the bond they grew during their training in the previous episode. When World crashes, he accidentally severs Soundwave's physical connection to the loop, which as we'll learn later, is not the way to do it. When Hot Rod is captured by the Quintessons and comes across some more familiar looking Sharktacons, for a second I thought they were going to help him, but nope, seems that they're bad too. Still haven't gotten any explanation as to why the Sharktacons are working for the Quintessons. When Hot Rod is presented to the Quintesson Judge, he refers to Amalgamous Prime, one of the original 13. The Judge Quintesson is much more like the typical Quintesson you think of with the five faces and whatnot. But its faces don't look like those from G1, or at least for the most part they don't. Also, it seems like they have three male faces and two female ones. So, more gender balance between them. The judge reveals that they are a multi-universal race that travels from universe to universe, annihilating one after the other. Too bad we don't actually get to see any of these other universes in, say, like a flashback or something. The others search for Hot Rod. Do you have any idea where Hot Rod is? He'll be back. He hasn't even met the scientist yet. Spoilers, McAdam. Hot Rod escapes and jumps off to Quintesson Tower. I wish I was a jet! Hmm, you know, I don't think we've ever had a hot rod that turned into a jet. Even Cloud Rodimus, who was a repaint of Springer, turned into a helicopter. Which makes it kind of funny that it's Whirl, another copter bot, who ends up saving him. It's also interesting that Clobber and Dead End talk about taking out Soundwave. It seems like they're much happier working with the Autobots than working with the Decepticons. But unfortunately for them, Soundwave finally wakes up. This was a very interesting episode. We learn a little bit more about the Quintessons, that the Sentinel-looking ones are called Prosecutors, and the more traditional five-faced one is called the Judge, and that they travel the multiverse destroying each universe as they go. Really makes me want to see more of this multiverse. Who knows, maybe we'll get references to other Transformers series in this one. Well, that's it for this episode. Let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, and all that other fun stuff. And I'll see you next time for episode 10, The Prisoner. I didn't kill my wife! I don't care! So I was telling Bumblebee, you should meet Bumblebee, he's awesome. I was telling him, you should consider going red. And then he said, everyone will think I'm Cliff Jumper. <laughs> so there's a Cyberus Cliff Jumper? Why haven't we met him yet?